How was it? Very cool. Different Hi. kind of animal, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and the Hannah was telling me something about the impact of the tariffs on their business, which is all American made bike. Yeah. 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 So why is there well, so because that? there's yeah. things like rubber, we don't need tires. <laughs> We don't make. Shift. I mean, we don't make that. You, all you, of that. U.S. doesn't make tires anymore. No. 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 Have it for 20 years. Really? For <laughs> Most components, frames, chains, they're all made in Asia somewhere. Yeah. Majority in China and Taiwan. Mm. And so we make all our frames from scratch. Right. Right. However, last year when the first round of uh, tariffs went into place, the first vendor that raised their prices was our American tubing supplier. 15 to 17%. Um, so opportunity. American oh, oh, company oh, 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 taking the opportunity oh, oh, of raising their price. Yeah. yeah. And they were the first ones that raised their prices on this. Wow. The wow. Chinese companies actually waited the longest mm -hmm. because they were hoping the tariffs would go away and right. they knew it would hurt their sales. So they right. waited six months before they changed their pricing. Yeah. No, it's a stupid, I mean, you know, years and years ago, I mean, I was against going into the WTO, but the whole theory was that China's in, we've got a dispute mechanism. We've never ever used the dispute mechanism against the abuses in China instead of tariffs. Well, if you use the dispute mechanism and you win a case, then you can apply tariffs and they can't reciprocate. Mm. But, you know, they're reciprocating because, you know, I mean, so it's like we're getting into this trade war, which is just going, I don't know where it's going to yeah. so. But that's interesting. Um, it's yeah. required us to raise our prices about 10% so yeah. far. Yeah. And the tariff sales, you think? Uh, I, at first, I shared with my customers what was going on. Right. And it was surprising how uneducated they were about how manufacturing works right. and the supply chain works right. and that most component bicycle components are made overseas even yeah. if we make every piece right. we can right. from scratch. Yeah, well, you're doing the most bad medicine. So some of the customers got really angry just having to learn about the reliance we have as a manufacturing right. US right. on Asia. Right. right. Um, so that was weird. I, I learned some things about yeah. uh, what people understand and don't understand. But having to raise our prices again for the round of tariffs that just started in June. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, electric batteries. Batteries aren't made here for bikes. Yeah. You know, we have to uh, yeah, hope, hopefully, hopefully uh, soon. Well, even the two or three factories that are making e-bike batteries, they source their cells from China, Korea. And, and they Korea. assemble. And they assemble, right? Yeah. So they're still getting tariffed even if they're doing 90% of the labor. Right. Um, right. Well, that's what we're thinking. Maybe Tesla eventually will have enough batteries. Well, that's the best thing they're going to. Someday. No, I, mean, yeah. I keep joking that if they make an e bike, we're yeah. going to sell everything else and just carry Tesla. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Well, they're great cars. A couple of them. So the tariffs certainly have hurt us and not helped us, even though we're an American manufacturer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they were like, why? Right. Why? Right. Right. <laughs> this is not helpful. So hopefully, if the transportation bills go through that have more of an emphasis on the value of electric bikes and bikes and transportation. And now I want to do as much electrification as I can in the bill, um, and we want to provide incentives because there are people talking about. I've talked to some of the transit companies, and they're saying, "Well, we'd like to have like e-bikes to take people to the transit, but our market isn't big enough." But if the feds would give us a little subsidy, then we could probably bring somebody in, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. So, um, you know, if we could get people on something electric to mass transit, and electrify the mass transit, and then, I mean, you know, we'd solve a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. But these are really cool. <laughs> I, I like the term microtransit. Yeah. And I'm guessing somebody has some studies because there's a health benefit to microtransit. We're not putting them in the figures, but right. those people are going to be healthier too. Sure. Because they're moving. And we yeah. know that's a huge issue. We're not putting it together. All we have is sickness insurance. But we, right. This would be a health. A health well, you know, we kept uh, money, but it's not discretionary to the states. Oh, I see. For, for alternative. I know they struggle like those, yeah. those programs. Funded. Yeah, no, they, they, they just they hated the program. So I'm not going to bring that back for sure. So that was a great program. Well, we know some kids who've grown up or adults now that way, and it was good for them. Right. Really good. Yeah, no, if you start when you're young, you're oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Just momentum. You start moving, you keep moving, you won't stop moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but if you let yourself get sedentary permanently, yeah. it's hard to escape. But even just a little bit of exercise every once in a while can. That's a monster. That's a sand bike. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, different kind of animal. Thought we keep that one in the cage today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta hit that just because of the way you're looking at it. Surprisingly, it's got the same uh, motor characteristics that the uh, uh, gazelle did that you were riding. Right. Same power, just really extreme gearing. Uh, so. I think it didn't beat so, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not Oregon. We actually have quite a few uh, so hundreds by bikes like that. Uh -huh. We'll take a big fat tire bike out in the wilderness. Um, and then no, we'll not in the wilderness! In the wilderness. And we don't allow them in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah. always tell them to check with the trail manager. Uh, that's for BLM lands, federal lands. It's really hit or miss uh, depending on the trail manager. Like the uh, Oak Ridge trail managers actually use e bikes to patrol their trails, check yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's not the trail. The uh, Forest Service BLM trails are fine. We just don't allow any, any uh, mechanical things. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, wilderness for me is that. We are so just had a big fight over that, and over whether or not we were allowed to fight some over. Yeah, no, they're like, no, tear it up. Okay. All right. Yeah, there you go. Get into the back end. Oh, 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 you got to recover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If it has wheels and hells, we can electrify it. That would be great for the single people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's uh, basically any trike or bicycle uh, that you can pedal, we can find a way to electrify. Uh, so we got a lot of specialty. Did you modify that? Yeah, we got a lot of specialty off-road projects and Frankenstein projects that take a while. Yeah, well, the pub cycle, that's it. They do the oh, the pub cycle, yeah. Uh, oh, exactly. Where there's like 10 people yes. lined up and they have a big motor. It's actually the same motor as this one uh, here, right. but it's called the VDS HD. And it's right. just bigger, it's got cooling fans, or fins. Uh, so, um, just say the gazelle, I mean, how far will it go on a charge? It really depends how you use it. Anywhere right. between about 30 and 60 miles. Right, how long does it take to charge? Like four to six hours. On a lithium battery, you'll get about half your charge in about two hours to half hours, and then it slows down from there. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, range is really. And you just use 110, you don't have to have 220. Yeah, uh, the chargers just look like a standard laptop charger. One end goes in the wall, one end goes in the battery. Uh, you can charge it on or off the light. Uh, I have uh, bought myself a little solar panel and put it on my roof and I ride the full uh, solar batteries. And that's all it takes. So I have a, a battery at home that the solar charges and I hook it up with the inverter. So you take the battery in and out of the bike? Nope. No, no, I just bring nope. the bike in and plug it in. I have an inverter off of the battery that, oh. I, that I'm charging from the solar. But it's, right. it's a standalone system that costs maybe $200. And I'm 100% solar, buddy. Yeah. yeah, I like that. And I like what about the winter? Uh, well, around here, the river's not a big deal. I actually added another panel, so, and it, but it still charges even when it's uh, when it's yeah, cloudy. It will charge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's amazing how little power electric um, uses compared to an electric car or something. We're talking we're not in the same ballpark yeah. as far as what we need for the solar to do it. Yeah, you're probably talking about seven to eleven cents to charge a big battery like these ones. Um, yes. you get a cost. In a week's worth of riding, yes, yes. you know. If we're so. not going to recognize it, if, uh, everybody would have your bikes. It would just be a blip compared to their stoves or heating or anything else. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, great. Thanks.